So first we'll go to Rome and uh, Luca Bergamo is the Vice Mayor in charge of cultural development for the city of Rome. So over to you, Vice Mayor. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, thank you for inviting us. I'll go straight to the point and for, you know, looking ahead for me uh, implies looking back. In 1948, uh, the right to, to freely participate in the cultural life was asserted with the Article 27 of the Human Rights Declaration. Having pondered the condition that made possible the horrors of the Second World War, drafters and decision makers were aware that the fulfillment of such right was conditional both to human emancipation and social cohesion, and ultimately to a healthy, just, and peaceful human community. It was amazingly long-sighted. Considering that a police star on the way to sustainable development and looking ahead several months before COVID appearance, the City of Rome and UCLG Committee on Culture began a local global initiative on people's participation in cultural life. Until commodification will be considered an economic priority, culture will be relegated in the sphere of private consumption. Therefore, both its contribution to sustainable development will be underestimated and equity, justice, dignities will be further threatened. In a few weeks, COVID-19 has swept away the world we knew and revealed to many, many that previously were unaware, fragilities and injustice, both of our societies and economies. The epidemic might be with us for a long time and we will have to adapt. Its social and economic impact are vast and will last, and we shall react. Cities are at the same time the hub for the epidemic, the front line for its counter, and where the impact is uh, the hardest. Global actions are much needed. Multilateralism must be reinforced. It is necessary that cities and local government urgently play a much greater role in the global governance as the draft report of the UCLG on the UN 75 consultation industry. We need more and renew United Nations. It's time to ignite new dialogues and as well to develop cultural policies that allow local and regional governments to bring common principles and new paradigms into reality. Cities need to set up teams, dedicate resources and structure to such endeavor in order to look to the future with a rational optimism. In this context, together with 22 cities and 47 experts and 50 networks, we have worked seven months to share the first uh, draft of the 2020 Rome Charter. The process will lead, which led to the drafting of the text that we shared with over 100 mayors at the end of May, aims at influencing global debates about development, citizenship and democracy, debates in which culture, human rights, and cities are yet too marginal. We see the UCLG presidency decalogue and the UN 75 consultation as a perfect frame for such initiative and to gain stronger emphasis on the cultural participation relevance in the SDG bringing new energy, as well as to reinforce the call for multilateralism and for the greater role for local governments in the global governance. The aim is as well to provide local authorities and citizens with thoughts, criterions, and practical tools to support their actions. The text we share is made of a reason why, a very important document and a set of principles. It's available on a dedicated web platform at 2020romcharter.org. We offer it as a basis and the launch of a global debate initiated and mastered by citizen local government under the species of UCLG and with its partners. We want this exchange to be global, inclusive of marginalized voices and culture, avoiding any kind of centrism. Only so, it might threaten the place of culture and sustainable developments and policies. With the challenges that provokes a crisis, it brings not the opportunity, the responsibility to think beyond. If some good can come from COVID-19, it will be because we have been brave enough to imagine different, better, more sustainable ways of living together. And I'd rather say even more because we won't stop doing so after the health emergency is over. Cities are 
at the core of this challenge. Cultural participation, and I stress this, cultural participation is not culture per se. It's the right to people to participate in cultural life. It's both necessary and instrumental to equity, justice, and human dignity. In a word, it's essential to every city sustainable development. We really wish to have you all with us on this endeavor, and hopefully inviting so, meeting in Rome in person or via digital platform, when between October the 1st and 3rd, we will gather to debate, decide, and plan our action for a dignified future with these guidelines. Thank you very much for inviting us, and be sure, be confident that uh, my city, our city, will be all the way along with you, wherever you are in this uh, large common globe. Thank you. Thank you, Vasna. And I just want to emphasize one of your one of your statements, and that was that COVID can be a catalyst for us going forward in terms of having a more sustainable and more inclusive way of, of living. I think we've all been alarmed by, you also mentioned human rights, and I think we've all been alarmed by um, the way that human rights have been encroached upon in many countries under the, under the the cloak of COVID. So it's something that we do need to keep our eye on. Can I go straight to Karima Benona, who's a UN Special Rapporteur on cultural rights? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you all. Good evening uh, for some of you. Thanks to the organizers for this very important digital convening. And I really send my sincere cultural solidarity to all of you in these difficult times. We mourn so many people, including leading figures in the world of culture who we have lost in every region of the world to COVID-19. We must honor their memories by continuing to promote a nourishing cultural life for everyone. Culture is the heart of our response to COVID-19. It is challenging to be asked to imagine a post-COVID era when the hope of getting beyond the pandemic sometimes seems remote. However, it is clear that we must continue to contemplate this future and plan for it, and that going forward requires a cultural rights perspective at the international, national, and local levels, both to the question of how we survive this difficult today and also how we imagine a better tomorrow. The rights, as the vice mayor just spoke of, the rights of everyone to take part in cultural life without discrimination and to artistic and scientific freedoms are guaranteed by international law. Everyone has the right to participate in and be consulted about policies to ensure these rights. All of this remains true. Even in these trying times when more than half a million people have died from the virus, cultural rights are not a luxury. They are key to the overall implementation of universal human rights, including at the local level, and they are a crucial part of the responses to many current challenges we face, from discrimination and poverty to COVID-19 itself. Moreover, the safeguarding and promotion of culture contributes directly to many of the sustainable development goals, including safe and sustainable cities and the promotion of gender equality. Transformation in a post-COVID era from a cultural rights perspective should be envisaged across several time frames. In the short term, we must work with urgency to guarantee financial support for artists, cultural practitioners, and cultural institutions. The centrality of culture as a coping mechanism in these times offers us a vital advocacy tool in this regard. Faced with the difficulties of the pandemic, we must remember, as the 2020 Rome Charter says, that culture sometimes is the solution and sometimes can help us to find other solutions. I also appreciate the Charter's emphasis on sharing cultures and creativity so as to strengthen social and democratic life. One of the things I think we all need the most now as human beings is to find safe ways to share and connect and culture offers us this. Taken together, all this means that we need nothing less than a global cultural plan to keep alive the cultural life, which helps keep us alive. This plan should be locally driven and globally supported and coordinated and resourced. In the short and medium term, we must continue to safely reconfigure public cultural life, including in digital spaces, with offerings for all sectors of society. 
Human rights guarantees apply online and public powers need to ensure access to cyberspace for all. Essential human rights, excuse me, essential, essential human rights commitments to non-discrimination and inclusion of diverse voices must be maintained even in the face of crushing budget cuts. And I hope we will continue to support at-risk cultural rights defenders around the world. There are so many of them. And I think today of the cultural activist Osman Kabala, who remains in prison in Turkey. Uh, this is just one example. From the medium to the long term, we will also be watching for safer times when more of a public cultural life and greater shared use of public spaces becomes possible again. We must commit to supporting that renaissance emphasizing that as important as digital cultural life may be, it is a complement, not an alternative, to a shared public cultural life when that becomes safe again. Such efforts must, of course, be shaped by public health expertise. Whatever the time frame, we must not give up on the dream of a better tomorrow based on new construction, not just reconstruction, in which we consider, for example, more climate-friendly ways to do our work in future. As grave as the challenges are, I end with a spirit of optimism. Optimism is not about denying reality. Optimism is, as an Afghan woman once said, key to survival. Let us use culture and work together to foster hope, hope that recognizes the gravity of today, but also says tomorrow, together, as we plan for 2030 in our cities and beyond, with our cultural rights to sustain us, with the SDGs as our guides, we shall prevail. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think we'll all agree that during the COVID, during this COVID era, many governments have woken up very late in responding to the effect on culture. And culture, culture, cultural rights are very much human rights. And I think you've emphasized well that, that culture is a way for different societies to connect.